Chapter 10, Secrets. When the fall came, Jo hid away in the attic, her special place where she did all her writing. When she finished her manuscript, she took it and another one from her desk, crept downstairs and out the door. She walked at a fast pace to the city until she reached a certain street. For a while, she stood in a doorway, calming her nerves before finally going up the stairs. When Jo came back downstairs ten minutes later, she looked as if she'd been through a trying ordeal. Lori was waiting for her. He had seen her leave in a determined manner and decided to follow. Why are you here alone? Are you up to some mischief, Joe? he asked. I have a secret to tell, he added. But first you must tell me why you're here. What's your secret, Teddy? Joe asked. She and Lori had become such close friends, she'd taken to calling him Teddy. Joe was the only one Lori let call him that. Yours first, Lori insisted. But I haven't got any, Joe said. Oh, yes, you do, Joe. You never could keep a secret. Now fess up, then I'll tell you mine. Promise you won't make fun of me or tell anyone at home, Joe asked. Lori nodded. Well, I've left two stories with the newspaper man, and he's going to tell me if he likes them next week. Hooray for Miss March, Lori cried. Then the celebrated author. Please stop, Joe asked. It probably won't come to anything, but I at least had to try. Now tell me your secret. Lori looked around, then leaned in and whispered in Joe's ear. Mr. Brooke has Meg's glove, he said. Isn't that romantic? How do you know, Joe asked, not pleased with the information. I saw it in his pocket, Lori replied. This is awful, Joe groaned. I wish you hadn't told me. I don't like the idea of anyone interested in Meg. Lately, Joe had felt that Meg was becoming a woman, and she dreaded the separation she knew was to come. For the next two weeks, Joe behaved so strangely that her sisters wondered if she were ill. She rushed to the door when the postman rang, was rude to Mr. Brooke, and whispered a lot to Lori. One Saturday, as Meg sat sewing, she heard shrieks of laughter coming from the yard. A few moments later, Joe ran in with a newspaper and fell on the couch, pretending to read. What are you reading? Meg asked. Oh, just a story, Joe replied. Well, why don't you read it out loud for all us to hear? Meg suggested. Joe cleared her throat and read the romantic tale. Her sisters all listened intently, and Meg even cried at one part. That was beautiful, Meg said. Who wrote it? Joe jumped off the sofa and tossed the paper in the air dramatically. Your sister, she shrieked. You, Meg cried, dropping her sewing. It's very good, Amy commented. I knew it, I knew it, Beth chirped. Oh, Joe, I'm so proud, she ran to hug her sister. Meg grabbed the paper from the floor and read the name underneath the article. Miss Josephine March. It says, she cried. I can't believe it. Mrs. March was proud of her daughter, too. And Joe watched excitedly as her family passed the newspaper around, each wanting to see her name in print. Then she took a deep breath and told them how she gave the story to the man in the city, then waited two agonizing weeks for his answer. When her breath finally gave out, Joe tossed the paper in the air again and fell back on the sofa, crying tears of joy.